This is a man dragging a traffic light that he has just stolen along the side of the road. This man hits a street light with a rock in order to break it off and steal it. This man carries a different traffic light down the middle of the road. And another. This man risks it all to steal another street light. Why the hell is this happening in South Africa? Why the hell? Stealing traffic lights has become a common occurrence in South Africa, but you might ask, why? Well, since I'm South African, I'll fill you in. The guys you see walking around with their stolen traffic lights aren't actually the problem. Sure, they are thieves that will take these traffic light poles to scrap dealers and sell them. But you see, the traffic lights, or robots as they're called in South Africa, yes, everyone literally calls traffic lights robots. Head straight and turn right at the robot, or hier die bliksem de rooi robot, or green is for go not slow, the blurry robot already turned green, you know that kind of thing, you know what I'm talking about, and I don't know why, maybe when they were introduced to SA they were seen as such amazingly advanced technology that they reminded everyone of sci-fi robots or whatever. Either way, these robots slash traffic lights that you see guys carrying around were already cut down and left on the side of the road by far more nefarious criminals. The cable tzotzis. Let's get into it. You see here, a guy is filming the traffic lights cut down at an off-ramp from the highway. You can clearly see how they've been chopped down, but the thieves weren't after the lights. No, they were after the copper cables inside. There is a thriving black market for copper in South Africa, and it has made the problems South Africa faces even more dire. Before I tell you about this black market and all the nonsense that goes around it, how about a word from today's sponsor? Take a look at this. Is this not the slickest, coolest wallet you've ever seen? I mean, guys, by now we know extra wallets are amazing, but now they have a new one. It's called the Eclipse. And this is not just a sleek white wallet, it has a trick up its sleeve. It glows in the dark. I kid you not. You want to be the coolest guy in the club? Do you want to have a party trick? I mean, who has a glow in the dark wallet? Ooh, I love your wallet. Right now, Exter has a Black Friday sale over at their website. Not only can you pick up the Eclipse wallet, which I really do suggest you do, but they have many other slick, stylish, amazing high-tech wallets for your perusal. Go to partner.exter.com forward slash SerpentZA and use the code SerpentZA to get up to 55% off. Seriously, now's the time, jump on it. And maybe you too can glow in the dark. As you probably know from my videos, South Africa suffers nationwide power cuts every single day. It's called load shedding. And this is because of the incompetent and corrupt government who chose to pocket and steal government funds allocated to electrical infrastructure upgrade and maintenance. So although South Africans suffer daily power cuts already, these cable tzotzis make life far worse for people by stealing not only the traffic and streetlight cables, but miles of underground electrical cables too, leaving areas completely without power for weeks and sometimes months, while the inefficient and corrupt state power company tries to fix and replace the stolen cables. So what is a Tsotsi? All South Africans know what a Tsotsi is. 
but I really do need to explain the word to all of you. You see, South Africa is a hotbed of crime. And everyone in South Africa is affected by crime in one form or the other. No one escapes. The thing is, we need to draw the line between criminals and Tsotsis. A criminal can be a thief. Anyone who participates in any sort of crime, big or small, is a criminal. But a Tsotsi is something else. A Tsotsi is a depraved, murderous thug whose heights of depravity, violence and absolute savagery can never be outmatched. When you hear horror stories of home invasions and the absolute inhuman acts carried out by attackers in South Africa, these are not carried out by criminals, no. That is the work of Tsotsis. Not to get dour or anything, but uh, people that don't know South Africa wouldn't believe how messed up it is under the Mandela facade. Here's a quick statistic for you. <clears throat> The second quarter of crime statistics released by the police state that nearly 7,000 people were murdered in less than 90 days. That makes uh, plus minus 77 murders a day from July to September 2023. That is a lot of Totsi nonsense going on there. 77 murders a day is quite a lot. So why are Totsis involved in stealing cables? Well, it all started out pretty innocently. Telephone lines and the occasional power line would be stolen and sold off for scrap. I mean, I remember back in the day being frustrated that I couldn't use the internet or call my friends because, you know, the telephone lines had been stolen again. I used to use ISDN and dial-up and that sort of thing. Or suffering a power outage for a few days because the power lines had been stolen once more. You know, I lived fairly far out back then, so we were more apt to experience cable theft in our area. But it used to happen often, I mean, like once every couple of months. But uh, as the market shifted and copper became a big ticket item, especially since copper is used in development projects, a huge black market for copper emerged. And of course, the demand skyrocketed. Now, it wasn't just petty cable thieves. Organized crime stepped in. Armed gangs started targeting power lines and other infrastructure that uses copper cabling, like telephone lines, traffic lights, street lights, etc. And if anyone tried to stop them, they'd get shot at. These gangs got even craftier. They'd steal the power lines and then lay in wait for the maintenance staff to arrive to fix the problem. They would then attack the maintenance staff, robbing them and stealing their vehicles, equipment, and any replacement cables they were carrying. The state power company started to hire armed security guards to escort the repair technicians, but the armed Tsotsi gangs would attack the security guards and steal their firearms and ammunition. I wish I could tell you that a solution had been found, but this is still ongoing. Because there is no stopping these Tsotsis, as they aren't afraid of the police, and I can guarantee are connected to the state power company too, as they have the uncanny ability to know exactly where the power lines are buried and when the power will be cut to those particular lines so that it's safe to dig them up. So to summarize, South Africa faces daily power cuts. But we can now add power cable theft to the mix, which ensures that many South Africans face power cuts plus cable theft related power outages. Oh, and the chance that if they try to do anything about it, they'll be murdered by Tsotsis. And people wonder why I'll never go back to SA. Sure, I miss the occasional Omar Rusk and a sticky Druvors. But I don't need to go back to SA to get them. Until next time, unlike the criminal chaotic mess that is South Africa under the ANC, stay awesome. And don't forget to check out my Friday show. It's a weekly live show I do with my friend, and we have a fantastic time. We show you what's happening in China, the latest things in the news, the soft power hour, all the funny and interesting things in between.